welcome back to the second part of this what is going to be a three-part video now because I still have a lot of colors to go through now for today I separated a few more reds that I thought could be interesting to add to the range I had swatched in the previous video if you don't know what I'm talking about I am building a spring themed watercolor palette and I have a video here on the channel I'm gonna link here uh, on the card where I've swatched some yellows uh, oranges and reds as you see here and now I'm gonna go uh, through the uh, some more reds pinks and I also have some violets over here I separated them here already and let me just get this out of the way I have my notes here on the side as well but as usual before we start I'd like to ask if you haven't subscribed already please consider doing so this will really help the channel to grow and get the content seen by more people if you are already following me remember to give me that thumbs up and subscribe to the notifications if you haven't already done so so you know when the part three of this video will be coming up and of course always leave your comments i love reading them i try to answer them the best that i can and all of this is really appreciated for the channel to keep growing so thank you very much for that now let's continue shall we and um so i separated a few more reds here i have Perlin red from Rambran and this is pigment PR149 and then I have Perlin dark red from uh, Horadam and this is PR178 so like I did before I'm going to put a little drop over here and I I do hope that you are able to see the colors well today while I'm looking forward to spring it's still <laughs> it doesn't look any uh, closer than it was when I filmed the first video it's a very gray and rainy day here in Dublin so I had to turn on the the lights to help. I know it's not as bright as it could be, but I hope it will be okay. And I think I'm gonna maybe include the scarlet down here with the pinks. So I'm gonna be using the same brush, the quill from um, Jackson's, the three slash zero quill let's see how they look it's also a cooler red like the permanent red deep by mission gold gonna take the occasion to say that I have a lot of uh, content coming up I have bought a few things I would like to share in future videos things I'm looking forward to testing myself so yeah keep an eye on this space <laughs> I'll try to to feel more now let's swatch the perlin red i don't remember which of the two i i put on first ah this is the brown brown one okay it's a beautiful type of red very rich warmer definitely
you can see here how warm that is it's a warm red but it's different from the other warm reds i had swatched i feel like we'll see when it dries now let me try to zoom in a little bit more so you can see better okay so i am going to keep swatching i'm gonna keep the tubes in order so i don't get lost <laughs> like i just did now now let's see this this the um, queen acridon scarlet by hobai and this is i think it's pr yeah pr 209 and i had to include it because it's one of my favorite pigments i love pr 209 and i have it from Sennelier, which is one of my favorites but as i said um it can be sticky so i'm using the whole buying one instead and i think i'm gonna put some other dots here since i'm doing that already i have here hmm so i have here carmine uh, carmine from um, van gogh it's also a beautiful color very very vibrant and um, if you have uh, checked my community tab lately on here on youtube you've seen that i also been experimenting doing some custom mixes using um van gogh student paints and i was quite happy with the results so there is a video that will be also coming up uh, talking a bit more about that now i have another one of my favorite pinks ever is the ruby red from uh, schminke this is pv19 this is one of my favorite pv19 versions i should buy a bigger tube of that because i only have this tiny one here that came in that very first set I mentioned um, my first set I got as like um, professional or artist quality watercolor set and since then I still love this PV19 now I have Rose Madder Lake by Sennelier and i also have the rose matter genuine by winsor newton i only bought this because i was reading somewhere i don't remember where about this um, color and uh, i know that is a very fugitive color the rose matter genuine so i never really cared about buying this but then i read somewhere that it had some fragrance a bit uh, reminiscent of roses and then I, I absolutely wanted to to get it afterwards because i, I love uh, rose fragrance so i got it and it's a really beautiful color also granulates which is not very common for pinks apart from potter's pink there is the new um indigo red if i'm not mistaken by schminke that also granulates but i didn't get it because it's extremely expensive for a very small tube i have here um also potter's pink from wizard newton rose doré and this one is really stuck in here for some reason okay uh, purple magenta ah actually i'm gonna swatch this one first this is quinacridone quinacrid <laughs> quinacridone permanent rose from mission gold and this is also a very beautiful pv19 i forgot to mention the rose doré um is pigment py19 and p yeah this cannot be right pv19 probably and py97 
although in the tube I cannot show you here but in the tube it's it really says PY19 and PY97 that's uh, that's a typo it's not possible to get to this color with two yellow pigments and um, what else so let's continue I have quinacridone permanent magenta here from Mission Gold I have uh, purple magenta now from Schminka and this one was one of the first paints that I um, looked and then I decided to build this palette this palette around it's a uh, quinacridone red violet from Rambra it's a very very beautiful color and I thought I was not using it because I forgot I had it actually and then I wanted to put on a palette and I thought of spring themed one it's a great occasion for it well let's um, start swatching these ones over here so first we have the Queen Acridone Scarlet from Holbein it's a very lovely um, pinkish red I really love this color and it's a great mixer as well this screams springtime to me <laughs> and by Dilted you can certainly paint a lot of uh, cherry blossoms has this nice kind of a vibrant bubblegum pink type of color I made it <laughs> I got it bigger and bigger as I went down with the um, diluted swatches but it's all good now we have the carmine from Van Gogh which is more on the purple side and it's a super vibrant color as well unfortunately carmine is not a very light fast color but I love it <laughs> and it has a more of a purplish tone when you see it diluted as you can see here now ruby red my swatches got considerably bigger <laughs> if I compare the yellow with these pink ones here I got really carried away with the pinks which means I have to start a new page uh, for the purples and blues and greens but that was expected already enough they are quite similar um, diluted even though they are so different in mass tone that's interesting now we have the Rose Mother Lake by Sennelier I don't know I, I think I didn't mention the pigments of this one this is also PV19 so we have a lot of uh, different PV19, uh, well, three so far that I know of, PV19 versions here to, to, to choose from. This is um, Schminka, this is Sennelier, and we have Mission Gold further on.
not surprisingly very, very similar also even though it's a bit less purple than this one it seems let me just check the carmine from van gogh what's the pigment that's pr176 so yeah it's quite different uh, mastone but diluted they are all looking pretty similar now the original um the genuine rose matter by Insert Newton and I don't know why I left a very tiny space for this one which is unfortunate so I'll do my best not to touch the other uh, blobs of paint but I want to make it just here to show you a bit of this lovely texture it has and I can feel the this light um, odor of um, kind of a flowery smell is really noticeable which is very lovely um, some people are more sensitive to smells so maybe it's something you want to consider I, I don't think it overwhelms me at all and I'm <laughs> very allergic to uh, fumes from paints like oil paints and turpentine and things of that sort but I do love um, natural oils and things like that like um, when I'm painting with handmade watercolors and the makers use clove oil I love that smell I find it so relaxing it's almost like you are in a, in a yoga class some meditative session uh, so I really appreciate it and, and this one is very very lovely now we have Potter's Pink which is PR 255 I think or this is ultramarine pink I always get confused it's PR 233 yeah it's a Potter's Pink by Winsor Newton and this is a more earthy type of pink which can be useful as well and it's great for texture you can mix it with other colors and get some nice effects in fact a lot of the super granulating colors from Schmincke have potter's pink in the mix it's a very lovely tone and very unique as well can see already the texture coming through let's see what's next I think Rose Doré from Winsor Newton as well this is a kind of a salmon -y type of pink is a very lovely color is I think it's not the light facets is not great on it if I'm not mistaken yeah it's two out of three but I mean it's a lovely color and considering I'm also including some neons in this list um, light fastness is not um, eliminating criteria for me a more um, concerned about transparency to be honest because like I mentioned in my previous video I have been doing some experimental painting trying to figure out my preferences and um, I really don't like <laughs> painting with opaque opaque watercolors I can deal with semi-opaque but opaque it's um, it's a challenge for me so I'm trying to make more use of my transparent uh, watercolors it's a very very beautiful color the rose dure now we have the queen queen acridone permanent rose from mission gold is the third um, need a bit more water is the third PV19 in this group 
it's super vibrant as well I really need to wait for this to dry until I can take a decision almost finishing this uh, row of colors now we have purple, magen purple magenta from Horadam this is more leaning towards violet now but this is a really really beautiful color I think is what is known in saint as Ilius purple Mm, let me just check the pigment over here yes it's PR122 it's very very beautiful color and I'm having less and less space <laughs> to paint my swatches and trying my best here not to get the colors to mix amongst themselves Sorry, it took me a while to figure out what I just jumped and I got it now. This is actually not the Purple Magenta by um, Schmincke. This is Queen Acridon Permanent Magenta by Mission Gold. Now I'm going to swatch the Horadam Purple Magenta. Sorry about that. I'm getting confused over here even though they both are made with PR122 pigment. That's why it also didn't occur to me that I was um, missing one of the colors as you expect they have similar color payout um, just think I needed to put a little bit more of the Horadam but the color is pretty similar Yeah. In any case, after these are dry, I'm going to name all of them and then talk a little bit about my choices as I did in the previous video now we are in on to the last one for the road that is the Rembrandt Queen Acridon red violet that is almost touching the one on the side here so I'm doing my best to swatch it over on the side And this one is PR202. That's a more unusual um, pigment. But the color is very, very similar. Here we have all of the colors I swatched now. I'm going to take a quick break. I am going to let these dry, name them, let me make a few notes, and then I'll come back for these uh, neon pinks. And I also have another four purples over here that we're gonna swatch. See you soon. So I decided to remove that page and leave it dry and if you leave, if you hear some uh, tool sound in the background, I think 
there's some works going on here with my neighbors I'm not sure what it's about hope it doesn't disturb you too much I was not expecting this <laughs> but that's the joy of living in a building so I am going to swatch now the other two pinks and the four uh, purples I had separated while the other swatches are dry so I'll start with the bright rose by Hobai it's a neon color so it will be very vibrant I'm really enjoying incorporating um, neon colors lately this is very stuck this is um, Windsor Newton Opera Rose and it's exploding out of the tube so I'll try to carefully close that up and deal with it a bit later okay I hope I have enough there to swatch then I have Dioxas in Violet from Mission Gold Usually I would go with Sennelier, this is my favorite Dioxas in Violet. I actually have a video with my favorites uh, from Sennelier, I'll put a card over here so you can check. And there Dioxas in Violet is just beautiful. But I decided to go with another one this time to use my other paints and also because like I said Sennelier can be quite sticky. So I'm trying to minimize the stickiness of this palette this is a very beautiful color by rambra and this is their ultramarine violet pv15 forgot to mention this one is pv23 opera rose is pr122 hmm. and there should be also mentioned that there's a flu element to that but in any case and this one is bv11 and ab83 which are strange names for pigments but i assume it's because it's a um, neon color then we have violet blue by sennelier and this is also an ultramarine violet i believe yes pv15 and last but not least, we have Right from Daniel Smith, which is part of their Primatech line. And it has some nice kind of sparkly bits on it. There's some bit of uh, um, separation from the Gamma Arabic. I hope it will be okay. but. Let's swatch now. So, bright rolls. Very, very vibrant color as expected. then opera rose vibrant as well but a bit more uh, less purplish more pink Then we have Dioxas in Violet. This is very, very rich. You can see that you don't need a lot. I didn't even put a lot, but it quickly became super dark. Almost black, I assume, on the camera.
but you can get it to a very nice lilac tone diluting it I'm trying to dilute a bit here also so you can see better the the tone Let's continue now with Rambra Ultramarine Violet. And now the blue violet by Senelier. They are very similar as they are the same pigment PV15. Senelier version looks slightly more vibrant, I would say. It's hard to judge when it's wet because some of these have a um, drying shift. I'm seeing this with the other swatches of the PV19. My swatches are really <laughs> not uniform at all. I started with little blobs and then I got into huge <laughs> squares and it's, uh, it's an exercise. And the last but not least, we have Purpurite by Daniel Smith. It's a bit gummy, I guess, because of that binder separation. It's a nice purple color, but I don't know why I see it more as a winter color I'd say or borderline autumn color it makes me think of colder weather it's a bit more um, muted beautiful but it doesn't quite fit with my idea for the spring palette I would say but as I did with the other ones I'm gonna title it I'm gonna let it dry and the best I can because my, <laughs> um, my my other swatch is still a bit wet and but um, I'll see I'll see how much dry I can get this before coming back and then I'll comment on my choices so I'm back haven't have much time to let everything dry completely but I think I have a pretty good uh, idea even so and I'll be talking through uh, my uh, decisions a little bit so I have these two reds that I added here and um, they are both Perlin red. One is uh, the deep version by Schmincke PR178. This is PR149 by Rambra. Although they are beautiful uh, red tones, I am not too sure that I have a need for either of those on the palette. I already have a warm red over here which I'm still on the side between the Old Holland and the Sennelier version. This is a little bit more muted. I would like to go with something a bit more vibrant. So uh, this didn't make it into the palette. I took some notes here of my favorites. This will always be a favorite because it's one of my favorite pigments, but I left this uh, open because I already have this pigment in my other CSK palette and my objective with this palette is trying to use some of the paints which have been a bit neglected so I'm still not too sure we'll see if I still have a spot left I may include this one otherwise this can go maybe on a summer palette or maybe 
I'll just use it separately because it's a color I like so much. Then um, the Carmine from Van Gogh is a very beautiful tone, but I thought that it was quite similar to the PV19 when diluted and its light fastness is 3 out of uh, 3, which is not good. I said again uh, before, light fastness is not a big concern, but if I have two similar tones and one is more light fast than the other, I would prefer that. So I would rather have a PV19 instead. And we have three PV19 here. We have the Ruby Red from Schminka, the Rose Matter from uh, Sennelier, and the permanent um, Queen Acridone Permanent Rose from Mijello. And I noticed that, of course, this one was very uh, diluted, but I noticed that there was a bigger drawing shift in the color with the Schminka and the Mijello version uh, compared to the um, Sennelier. So I prefer the Sennelier for that reason. Of course, this also can be uh, impacted by the paper. I'm using a very inexpensive paper here. They may behave differently in other types of paper, but consider I haven't been using a lot this um, Sennelier color also. I'll be happy to include it on the palette. Then the Rose Matter Genuine is a lovely color. It has this very spring um, aroma to it. So I would love to include it on the palette and we'll see if um, I need more space. I may remove it, but I would love to, to have it on considering it's made of um, natural pigments and it has this natural smell. I think it would be very nice to have it. Um, not decided on the potter's pink. It's very good for texture and I think this can be very useful. But I'm not too sure if the tone fits in with my idea for this palette. So it's still a work in progress and I'm, I'm still undecided about this one. The Rose Dore definitely has to go in there. As, as, as soon as I saw this diluted, it reminded me of Rose Gardens. And this is um, a scream springtime to me. So definitely want to include that one. What else? The last three here are basically the same um, color, just different pigments. We have PR122 for Schminke and this one I didn't note, but I think this one is Mission Gold. So, um, and this one is another version of the same color, but with pigment PR202, that's a bit more unu unusual. And considering, like I said, that this was the initial reason for me to think of building a, a spring themed palette, and this is a, a more uh, unusual pigment, I decided to go with that one for this tone. I think it's a very useful color to have to paint flowers. Now, Coming down to the purples here that are still wet and the very, very bright <laughs> pinks. The Opera Rose is so vibrant. It's uh, really probably not um, be showing accurately on camera, but believe me, this is, um, it has some neon bits here and there. I think, I don't know, if I had to choose one of the neons, I would probably go with the bright rose. But at the same time, I find it quite similar to this other one, just a bit more neon. So I'm not too keen on including either, either of those. I have plans of making a um, summer palette lately and lately, no, later. And I definitely want to include some neon colors in that one. So um, the dioxas in violet is also a beautiful color, but I found it a bit too rich and dark. And I can easily mix purples, including uh, uh, some blues in the palette with all the pinks that I'll have. So I don't think I'll be including that one in this palette. However, I will include the purple because these two are very lovely uh, versions of um, ultramarine violet, PV15. 
and I'm still having a hard time deciding between them because they both look so nice. Uh, the diluted version looks pretty similar, but on the mass tone, I'll try to show you here. Maybe you can see better, even though it's a bit wet. So the um, Rambra one has um, more delicate texture, delicate granulation, but it has some kind of pinkish um, undertone that comes through when you are spreading the painted diluted you can see a little bit of this pink undertone and it's really nice the sanalia one also has a little bit of a pink undertone a bit less visible but it has a more pronounced texture which would be nice as well but i'm more tempted to include this one from rambra um, just because of that lovely uh, pink undertone. And uh, finally, the Purpurite, which I didn't write here for some reason. The Purpurite, it's a very lovely color, but as I said, I see it as a very moody color and makes me think of winter time. Um, so, I'll probably save that for a future palette. So let's see how the count is so far. We have one, two yellows, one, two reds, and then maybe this one would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I count that right? One, two, nine, possibly ten, if I include the quinacridone scarlet. So let's say nine would be a bit over half of the palette, which is good because I still have to go through greens and blues and neutrals which means we will have a part three for this video before I can finally pour this paint into the palette and do some painting with it. So if you follow me to here, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Remember to give me the thumbs up if you like the video and I'll see you soon. Bye.